right now. Hello, folks. Uh, welcome back to the Brit Kanawa West Hancock Athletics Podcast. This is Dan Crawl on May 16th, 2024, uh, episode 108. And tonight I have the undefeated 1973 Kanawa football team with me. Uh, I got six seniors uh, from that team. Uh, we're going to talk about that 9-0 and season uh, where they led the state in scoring that, as far as we know, we just had a discussion about that before we hit record that we think they did. It was really close either way, uh, but they missed the state playoffs that year due to the, the original playoff system that was started back in 1972. So we're going to talk about that as well. So welcome tonight, fellas, and, and thanks again for coming on. Uh, before we get to these guys, uh, I have 24 sponsors tonight. Uh, as you can see on my screen here, uh, lots of sponsors, a lot of money going to the Sanger Legacy Fund. I'll let you look through those throughout the episode. Um, but that, all that money goes to the Sanger Legacy Fund. That money goes to the West Hancock Hall of Fame. We give out scholarships every year. Any of the athletic or activity funds or community outreach programs, anything that benefits kids in the school and the community, uh, we give money towards those things or those people that need it. So if you want to give to the Sanger Legacy Fund, you can go to sangerstrong.com. If you want to sponsor the podcast, get a hold of me, Dan Crawl, as well. Um, before we hit um, these guys and some introductions, I always highlight a former episode. Uh, typically, I just do 50 episodes ago, but I have to highlight another one 100 episodes ago as well. 50 episodes ago on episode 58, I talked to Beth Rasmussen, a former coach and teacher at the school at West Hancock. And then 100 episodes ago on episode 8, the guy in the top right corner of your screen here, Don DeWard, and I uh, talked way back in 2021. Uh, I thought that was kind of ironic that that was exactly 100 episodes ago. So uh, make sure you check that one out of Coach DeWard as well. All right, let's start with some introductions here. Um, we'll kind of go clockwise from the top. So Doug over to Don and over to Ned and kind of go around that way. So just tell everyone who you are, where you are these days, and what's keeping you busy. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, Doug Benton, and I live in San Francisco. And uh, I've been retired since 2015. And um, yeah, what do I do to keep busy? You know, I, I play tennis and I cycle and we do a lot of road trips and travel i just got back from new york city my daughter lives there now and so yeah there's uh not a whole lot of free time don uh don deward i live in Pella, iowa now have for 45 years since i left Kanawa. uh most of my time is spent with my grandkids i have six grandkids at all have grown up and lived in Pella. A couple of the older ones are gone now, but I still have three younger ones involved in a whole lot of uh, AAU and sports. So I spend a lot of time going to uh, ball games. Uh, most of you probably know I coached football at Central for 35 years. I quit, quit doing that when my grandson started playing junior high football so I could watch them. I struggled to be able to do both so I chose my grandchildren it's been good uh, I got elected mayor of Pella five years ago so I mess around with that once in a while but uh, I do play a lot of golf and uh, yeah mostly spend time with my grandkids and uh, Don's granddaughter and my niece are in the same grade the same age so I, when we go see her we see a lot of Don so um, always fun to catch up with coach not Jason Harley, but Mr. Harley, go ahead. Uh, I'm Ned Harley. Um, my wife, Sherry, we farm here in the canal area. We've been farming for quite a few years, and uh, we got rained out last night, so it's I can be here tonight. I guess it's been a long spring, but uh, um, we I also work part or uh, part time for another company up here. I travel around the Midwest, so, and I have a son, Jason, lives in. Tallahassee he's married with three kids I have three grandkids there and have a daughter Kristen that lives in Nashville and uh, we spend some time driving that direction in the winter time we go down there quite a bit to Florida and down to Nashville and visit kids and grandkids oh, and Jason's a podcast alum so check that out oh, right. well. yep. uh, Russ we'll go with you next um okay I'm uh, Russ Peters I'm a farmer contractor from Kanawha, Iowa. Uh, 
in my spare time, I uh, work for a nonprofit that I represent five states in the Midwest, uh, um, the Contractors Association, and they send me all over the country. So uh, it's it's been fun. Let's put it that way. Randy, we'll go with you and then we'll end in the middle with Kelly. Yeah, I'm Randy Jordager and married to Phyllis. Got two uh, daughters, two grandkids. Uh, retired in 2020 and we do a lot of camping. And last uh, winter, we watched a lot of basketball. My grandson, he's going to go to Truman State next year. Other than that, pretty boring. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And we'll end with Kel in the middle there. Am I in the middle? Yep. <laughs> okay. On mine, I'm way on the left. So. Yeah, and mine, uh, what's recording here in the middle, so we'll go with that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm Cal Ekoff, and um, I, uh, I I spent a little time at Iowa Lakes Community College and graduated in small engine repair. Uh, I did that for a few years, and then the business that I was working for closed down um, on New Year's Day. And uh, since then, uh, actually, I kind of got into the insurance business, and uh, I, I had sold insurance for quite a few years. Um, right now, my wife and I are, are just kind of, I guess, part-time. We're, we're semi-retired maybe, but part-time uh, janitors at our local church. And um, uh, I have uh, three children, um, two boys and a girl, and about 13 grandkids, I guess. And, wow. and so like some of the rest of you, it, it's a busy time with all their school activities and sports and things. So, uh, but basically that's, that's me. <laughs> so. All right. Well, I got six of you guys, your seniors on this team, and I feel like we're missing somebody. So give me a second here. I'm going to click a button. I figured we couldn't do this podcast without. It's not Chris Vinson, but that's the daughter of some guy named Carrie Van Winkle. He's going to be joining us tonight. So I figured we can't do this without coach. So we're going to get coach Van Winkle on here with us. His daughter, Chris, has been helping me with tech things there he is coach how we doing we're doing fine how are you good do you recognize some of these guys <laughs> uh can't see them very well <laughs> how look, you doing coach you looking good i recognize this guy <laughs> <laughs> they all look i recognize same. him now who's this so uh you got doug benton you got don deward ned harley right. kelly Koff. Randy Jordanger and uh, Russ Peters. Okay, Thank you, everybody. There we go. So I figured, guys, we can't do this without uh, without Coach. So Coach did an episode with me. I don't know what two years ago now. Yeah, and I figured uh, we better get Coach on here with you to, to tell the truth when you guys start to exaggerate about how good you were fifty years ago. So well, they would, they would, they aren't exaggerating. <laughs> You know how it goes over time sometimes, you know, a couple extra yards or a couple extra touchdowns they throw in that didn't happen. So we got to keep the record straight. <laughs> so. All right. Well, welcome, Coach. Uh, we're going to walk through this 1973 season that you guys had. Uh, like we said in the intro, 9-0, and undefeated, led the state in scoring, didn't make the playoffs. So we're going to talk about um, all these games and all your experiences. So let's get this thing rolling. Uh, game number one, you guys beat Woden Crystal Lake 45 to 16. And I have a little recap for each one of these. So Randy Jordanger scored on a three yard run in the first quarter. In the second quarter, Ned Harley scored from 35 yards out. Woden Crystal Lake responded in the second with a score, but Marv Trenary had a 60 yard touchdown run to make it 24 to eight at halftime. In the third quarter, Trenary had another touchdown, a short one, and Ned uh, scored from 30 yards out. Todd Carter uh, ran a 40-yard interception back for a touchdown to put the game out of reach. And then uh, Woden Crystal Lake scored halfway through the fourth quarter to make it that final score of 45-16. to 16. Uh, What were you guys' thoughts on the season opener? Feeling pretty good about things? Did you know you were going to be as good as you ended up being after week one? Go ahead and talk about that. Well, I, <clears throat> we had been pretty good the year before, but we had had a number of injuries to what were then our seniors. And when we played our last game that previous year, we were playing with all juniors and sophomores. We only had 18 kids that suited up for that. But we lost by six points, but we 
played really well. And so it looked pretty good going into the, going into the, the, these guys' a senior year. So expectations were pretty high. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And, they, and of course they thought they were really good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did and they said, and they were. So the, the term the kids use today is swag. Did they have a little swag to them, you know, or a little, um, not arrogance, but just had that mentality of, you know, this is going to be a good team. Is that kind of what we're hearing? I think they, I think they realized that they were, they had a chance to be good, but mm -hmm. they knew that they had to improve every, every week and, and that there was a lot expected of them. Mm -hmm. Any of you guys, players-wise, thoughts on first game season expectations at this point? Well, I'm trying to figure out how Woden scored 16 points. I didn't remember that, but uh, yeah. you know, going going into the season, if you uh, we had the state champion four by one. Well, in those days, it was a 440-yard relay team in our backfield, so I was a 165-pound guard. And, uh, you know, with the, the kind of speed we had back there, I had a pretty good idea we were going to be a little bit hard to stop up on offense. And what kind yeah. of offense did you guys run exactly? Uh, by this time, we were running the wishbone. Wishbone. Yeah. A lot of pulling guard action with that, too. There was some of that, yeah. Uh, we had a trap play, and, and we pulled them, I think, on sweeps. We had to have a play in there for Jordanger to run up the middle because uh, Arlie and Ternary, we'd just sweep right and sweep left, and they'd outrun everybody. So we'd have to mix up a little trap inside there for Jordanger to run up the middle. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You did it quite well, if I remember right. Yes, you did. But I remember that you broke your cousin's leg in that game up at Crystal Lake. On a, pull, on a pulling on a pulling I did yeah really didn't seem to bother yeah, Dwayne Dwayne DeWard maybe now that you're saying that I kind of remember it now I remember I was I went through Crystal Lake this I don't know if it was winter time I don't get through there that often and I remember driving by where the football field is you forget about it after all those years and I just about drove up in there where the field I don't remember anything about it or anything but I just about drove up in there and yeah we played our first game there you know, I don't think we played there any other years, did we? But at the senior year, we were up there just on the south side of Crystal Lake, and I just about stopped to reminisce about it. And I, I guess I looked and kept going, but I do remember that game now quite well. Can you can you uh, refresh my memory? Who am I talking to? That's Ned. Ned, Ned Harley. Yep. Oh, Ned, okay. You look different. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, probably. Yeah, but... No, and I remember that that was uh, the first game where we had two new assistants, and Bob Salee had left after the previous year. And I remember uh, getting home, and within a half an hour, he was on the phone and wondered how every everything went and stuff. And he was impressed. Who uh, who became your new assistants for this season, Coach? Uh, Bruce Bennett and uh, Craig Bayon. Okay. Do those guys end up sticking around Kanawha for a while? Uh, Craig did. He became the head coach after I left. And then Bruce uh, left the same year that I did. And he, and he went down to North Polk. Okay. And he just this last year uh, retired. Oh, wow. Good for him. Uh, was Gwen Chris like a conference school back then? Or was that a non-conference game? It was non-conference. It was non-conference. I, I can't remember exactly who was all in that North Star and how your setup was, if you had a non-con or it was all conference games or not. So, no. Let's go to uh, game two here. A big 49 to win over, win over Corwith Wesley. Uh, I put in my notes, you guys had a big third quarter. Uh, you had a 12 nothing halftime lead, thanks to a first quarter touchdown run by Randy from two yards. And then Marv Trenary had a seven-yard run in the second quarter to make it 12-0. Uh, a question I asked was, what was your extra point or two point? Did you guys typically go for two? Did you have a, were you 
wanting to kick and just wasn't going well. What was the strategy there on uh, after touchdown plays, Coach? Well, I'm not sure. It, it seems like we went for two quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, did we have a kicker? <laughs> Doug. <laughs> really? Yeah, I kicked a few. I kicked a few field goals. <laughs> yeah. Extra points. Well, I kicked. Actually, I think I made a field goal once. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I have the tape. I'll pull it out and send it to you. <laughs> no, that's that's okay. I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Well, well, if you're I, I, about offense and speed, you probably didn't need to kick it much because the percentage play was probably going for two, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah, that was 12 nothing at halftime. And I said a big third quarter. You guys scored 29 points in the third quarter. Uh, Ned returned the opening kickoff back 83 yards for a score. And then Ned uh, had to have been a tired man uh, after this. He had an 80-yard touchdown run followed by a Doug Benton 10-yard touchdown run, and then Jordanger's 57-yard touchdown run. Uh, and then in the fourth quarter, uh, Tom Otto was playing quarterback, and he plunged in from two yards out to make it a 49 nothing final score, like we already talked about. Uh, what I read about in the paper, Coach Van Winkle said he was pleased with the defense. Uh, you guys only gave up 53 yards uh, in that game to Corbett, right. honestly. Uh, talk about the defense a little bit here. Uh, he gave up 16 points to own Crystal Lake, and one of those scores were kind of in the garbage minute times at the end of the game, and then you shut out court with Wesley. What kind of defense did you guys run, and uh, we were, talk about the mentality? I think by that time we were running a 52 monster, 52 slant. And yeah, and I, as I was thinking about this, uh, when we were talking about defense, we ran a 52 monster, and uh, – we had two calls, uh, line calls. Uh, we would slant either strong or weak side. And uh, our, our uh, the words we used were get tough uh, to go towards the monster. And uh, huh, now I'm forgetting. Let's what go the, animals. Oh, let's go animals. Let's go animals was a slant away. That was how we made our calls. So I played linebacker, and that's how we made our calls at the line of scrimmage as to which direction we were slanting yeah and what's the origin behind those calls do you know what the story is for those <laughs> we just wanted to have something with a t in it for toward and something with an a in it for away <laughs> ask the bunch pretty, of high school creative, kids pretty, pretty creative huh yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey, it works <laughs> yep whatever works so yeah. Um, so, Don, you said you played linebacker. What did you guys play defensively? I was safety. I was safety. Safety, Randy. How about you? I played linebacker. Backer, Kel. Uh, defensive end. And Ned. Cornerback. Corner and Russ. Left tackle. Left tackle. Nice. Ra Randy, weren't you the monster? I was when I was a junior. Marv Trenary oh. was the monster when we were seniors. Oh, okay. Okay. I forgot that. I stepped up a, a little bit. You got promoted? I got promoted. <laughs> Rand, Randy and I were the in, uh, inside linebackers. Well, um, I knew you were, Don. I remember that, but I thought, yeah, I just, yeah, I forgot about Marv Trenary. Let's uh let's scoot over to game three here. Uh, I love the score here, sixty-seven to two, win over Clemmy. I love it when a game ends with a two, um, just a safety. Um, Clemmy, like I said, sixty-seven to two. Uh, Ned had touchdown runs at twenty-three and eighteen in the first quarter, gave you guys a fourteen nothing lead. So apparently there was some kicking going on there, or maybe a two point conversion. I don't know. Uh, the paper never really specified a lot of the two pointers in some of the games. In the second quarter, uh, Randy had a four-yard touchdown run. Marv had a three-yard touchdown run and a 94-yard run before halftime to give you guys a 34 to nothing lead. Um, I was going to ask Marv if he has a 94-yard run left in him, but he's not here tonight. Uh, you guys were explosive. I mean, a lot of 50-plus yard plays. Um, we'll get to it in the uh, couple games from now, but uh, how long have – possessions that you guys have typically three plays type of thing were you that explosive or you know just a couple plays and you're scoring is that how that was looking for you well i think there were some 
parts of games where it was kind of like that, but especially when we got the other team down. Yeah. And stuff. But other than that, no, sometimes we had long, long drives. But we had enough, we had so much speed that we could have rake it about any time. Mm -hmm. What's crazy is I can remember that 67 yard or 94 yard run. I think we ran a, a 33 power, that we called it. Uh, and uh, uh, Ternary was the three back, Ned was the four back. And uh, I can remember uh, going out to block somebody and he went past me and was gone. <laughs> 90, 94 yards that happened a lot we had a tremendous speed in the backfield they'd outrun your blocks most of the time oh yeah you didn't have to block very long and they were <laughs> gone i wasn't going to bring it up until you did I'd be like how often did they get past you on the polls uh, apparently often so yeah. yeah um doug button also had a 56 yard touchdown pass to todd carter in the third as well as a 12-yard Ned Harley touchdown run, and Tom Otto had a 15-yard touchdown run to give you guys a 53 to nothing lead. In the fourth quarter, Tony Morris threw a 40-yard touchdown pass to Otto. Dennis Ziegler ran an interception back 50 yards for your final points. And then Clemmy got a safety uh, with the last, sounds like the last couple minutes of the game. So uh, was this kind of a statement win for you? Was Clemmy any good at the time? Was it you just knew it wasn't going to be a close game, one of those, because next up was eighth-rated uh, Sheffield Chapin. Uh, what was kind of the mentality in the mode at, during and after this one? I, I remember Clemmy, and maybe it was from basketball, or it, that 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 was kind of like the uh, the hated team for some reason. Did, did I am I making that up, or it seemed like we didn't like Clemmy? Well, they had they they had some pretty good teams a few years before that, but they had those brother brothers. What were those brothers' name? Hartzell or something? That were a little oh, older. Yeah, than Rick, Rick Hartzell. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. They had a, right. They had a really good team a few years before us, so it was kind of a rivalry. I don't remember. They must not have been very good by the time we were seniors, but I think earlier they had a pretty some pretty good teams. Yeah, I think they that was. They were pretty good for a few years, and I think they had kind of slacked off. And I think that that's, we just kind of gave it to them pretty good. I remember that. But they had been better earlier, a few years. There was a rivalry with Clemmy from way back. I, you know, as long as I can remember, there was a rivalry with Clemmy. And uh, I can't really give you the reason for it, even. It was just there. Yeah. I kind of faintly remember that too, Russ. Maybe it's from my sisters and my older brother or something, you know. I just don't think the two schools liked each other. That's what I recall. Well, I think you're right. Well, they were really good in basketball, and they were always trouncing us there. And uh, remember, we shared guidance counselor. Oh, Dwayne, right. Dwayne yeah. Fenster. So. Yeah. yeah. He coached baseball for them. <clears throat> Seth and Anyway, yeah, and a year or two before that, before this, there was practically a riot after the at the end of the game that was played over there, football game and stuff, and one in which both crowds came out of the bleachers and rushed to the middle of the field, accusing this and that, and the officials running for the car. <laughs> and stuff. I remember that. <laughs> No, I, I remember because your dad too. was I, I leading remember. the charge. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. What do you know what started it all? Do you remember the details leading up to the just heated no. moment in a big game type of thing? Just well, the, our townspeople, and I think the parents of these guys and and the people from the opposition were always betting on the games. And I mean, good amounts of money were changing hands and, and this sort of thing. They were betting on the games. And and uh, I can remember Doug Benton's dad coming into the teacher's lounge one day and said, no, Van Winkle, don't put the freshman in 
until you've got us at least 50 points up. <laughs> and, and I said, Daryl, I said, isn't it good enough just to win? No, we had to give them 40 points or they wouldn't bet us. <laughs> and he says, if you do put them in and we don't win our bets, you're on the first bus out of here. <laughs> and so I said, Daryl, there are no buses that go through Cacao. He says, we'll take you down to, down to Belmont. We'll keep your wife and the kids. They're okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this was, was funny. This was seventy three, so statutes of limitations are gone. If there's any illegal <laughs> betting, you know, we're all good. I think so. Yeah, yep. <laughs> no, they... that's fun. Um, so yeah, big game here. Game four, Sheffield Chapin. Uh, they were was this really game four. Yep, it was the fourth game of the season. Yep. Uh, okay, you I, thought guys... was... I thought it was later than that, but okay. Uh, according to my research, anyway, I, I went week by week through the newspaper, so hopefully I'm right. Uh, big win, though, 20 to 6. Yeah. Um, never really specified where it was at. Was it in Canal or was it in Sheffield? It was in Sheffield. Okay. And it um, was a cold, rainy, miserable night. How was What that? were your crowds like? You said you had people betting on games and spreads, but big crowds, good community support um, from the Canal locals? Oh, yeah. We had terrific community support. Yeah. Bleachers are always full, and the people really followed the kids and and really enjoyed it. Good. The local doctor even went to all of the games. I mean, that's how. I mean, the, this was deep. Uh, Canal yeah. was a football team now. Yeah. You know, forever. I remember that game also. Now, wasn't Sheffield like rated what fifth, sixth, or seventh? They were rated pretty high in classes. A that year, weren't they about the, when we played them? Yeah, yes. eight, what I found. Eight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they had had a long winning streak. Uh, and I got this from one of the ministers here in town who was our middle school principal for many, many years till he retired here. But he was a junior high student at that time and he was at that game <laughs> and stuff. And he remembers that and and so on. And and he said that they had a long winning streak and and we broke it and they, they couldn't believe it. But and that that uh, eventually proved to be the championship game. Uh, what I found yeah. in my notes. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Don. Well, I was just going to say they they had had, as we said, a lot of success. They had a Peter's. Peter's brothers, uh, they were a year right. apart. Yeah. Terry, uh, uh, Terry Peter, Peters was the play, was our age, uh, and he was really good. His older brother was really good, too, but he had graduated the year before. They had won the conference the year before. And so, yeah, it was a big game. Uh, Terry Peter ended up going to Central College and playing football, so I got to know him quite well, so that was always fun to – rub it in a little bit that uh, we had beaten them when, when he was a senior, but he was a very good tight end at central, but I don't remember much about the game. It seemed like he ran a lot of sweeps. They ran, he, he played quarterback and he ran a lot of sweeps and had some success and they played great defense and it was a real battle. I just remember, I think it rained really hard and I didn't even remember. I didn't even know it was raining until the game was over. Because it was so intense. Uh, yeah, it was. I remember that. Yes. I now, remember a great uh, bus, hey, bus ride home. Hey, uh, Coach Van Winkle, do you remember? Yeah. I remember one play in that game. And uh, we were on defense. And I, uh, and I verified this in the film. And they threw a really long pass. And Todd Carter had their big wide receiver. They had a really tall wide receiver. And I can't remember... I think, you know, who, what his name was. Anyway, he got behind both Todd and me and the pass was just barely overthrown and they missed it. But I, what I remember, you yelled, you were cussing up a freaking storm <laughs> at Todd and I. Like, you just lit into us. And I remember that I could see your face. You were just like, Ugh. you know, like, how could you let this guy get behind you? You know, we were fortunate that they never caught the ball, but um, I that's the one play I think I've even had nightmares about that play. Like, I Jesus, can, I they can caught the ball, I probably would have had to walk that. back to Kanawa. 
<laughs> I remember you coming telling me after the game if he'd have caught that, he says, that would, you wouldn't have seen me. I'd have just kept right on going. <laughs> hey, well, hey it Dan. It was, oh. it, Carter, it was Carter's man, but of course I was responsible for not letting anybody behind us. And we both let him behind us. And fortunately they missed the pass. Yeah. Hey, Dan, what was the, uh, what was the game flow with? Do you have the, yeah, I don't know that um, you said, said how the scoring happened. Yep. Yeah, so uh, in the newspaper, it said Kanawa was in command most of the first half. So I read that as in like, they didn't really threaten the score. You guys maybe controlled the ball a little more. Um, Marv Trenary had a 56 yard touchdown run and then Ned got the two pointer. Um, and it didn't specifically say first quarter, second quarter, uh, but it was um, first half. And then with 35 seconds left in the second quarter, Ned scored from three yards out. Uh, the two-pointer was no good, gave you guys a 14-0 lead at halftime. And then in the third quarter, and again, it never it, – sometimes it gave times of, like, what part of the quarter, sometimes not. Sheffield Chapin scored on a two-yard Terry Peter run, the guy you guys mentioned already. And then uh, it says uh, Doug and Ned batted down the two-point pass place. So you guys had a 14-6 lead. And then they got deep into Kanawa territory uh, later in the game. And Todd Carter intercepted a pass down to the seven, got down to the 37 yard line. And then you guys had a very methodical drive, uh, no big plays really until uh, um, Doug scored on a one yard touchdown run to give you guys that 20 to six win. So um, that's what I found. Um, Coach Van Winkle praised the line said the line won this game for us. So it sounded like you guys were in control of the ball most of the night. Um, he credited Doug Ritima, Don DeWard, Chuck Scher, Warren Johnson, Russ Peters, Kelvin Ekoff, Todd Carter, and L. Reuter uh, was, were all mentioned in the newspaper. So I'm a former lineman. It's always nice to hear the lineman get some newspaper mm -hmm. time, some credit. Um, so that's kind of the flow of the game as best as I could find. So does that sound about right? Yeah, well, late in the game or in the fourth quarter anyway, they were starting to drive and they threw a pass in that driving in that rain and Donnie DeWard picked it off. And I remember him just screaming and yelling. I mean, just, just totally going out of control, but he intercepted and we had the ball back. And then I don't think we turned it over then after that, it was near the end of the game. One thing I will have to say, uh, this game is probably the only game that, the first string got to play all four quarters yeah. and we were conditioned yeah, to the right. point. We were conditioned to the point where it was no problem. I mean, we were, I'm not saying we were fresh afterwards, but we were, we could have played a lot longer. Yep. Yep. Well, the next game, it doesn't look like you guys played the whole game because in the <laughs> fifth game of the season at Cal, uh, <laughs> 61 to nothing, I'm guessing, uh, by the third quarter, most of you guys were out of the game because uh, you had a 54 to nothing halftime lead thanks to three Randy Jordanger touchdown runs, uh, two by Ned and one by Dennis Ziegler. Uh, you had two touchdown passes in the second half, uh, betting to Jordanger and then Otto to Todd Carter. 481 yards from scrimmage, 447 of those on the ground. So you guys were 5-0 and overall, 4-0 and in the conference. Um the playoffs were a new thing at this point. 1972 was the first year of the playoffs, four teams per class. At this point, with you guys getting past Sheffield Chapin, which you coach alluded to was kind of the conference title game at that point already, were playoffs on your mind? Did you guys think that was in the realm of possibility? How'd that, how'd that look to you guys? Playoffs had been brought up, and we'd talked about them many times by that time. I don't know if it was official talk, but I mean, the teammates, uh, the teammates were talking. Yeah. Did, did we already realize that it was going to be tough to get in or not? Because it just seemed like that whole system was needed an overhaul. But did we think we could get in? Yes, I think so. Really? Because it went down to the final game. And the, the record of the team that had beaten us the year before uh, was 500 or less. And that's what cost us the playoffs. Okay. And from the season before counted for that season? 
No, but they the season before they were six or they were seven and two or something like that. And this season they were 500 or less. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And so this was an extra game. This wasn't a conference game. And so we contacted the state to see if we had to play it. And they said, well, if you don't, then you forfeit. I said, well, what if they don't want to play it? No, you have to play it. I said, that doesn't seem fair. I said, we've got the best team in the state. And I truly believed that all the way. And, uh, but it didn't do any good. Was that Bernie Sagow at the time? I'm guessing he was the director at the time. Yeah, I think so. And I think it was well, the first or second year of the playoffs. And yep, second. they were trying to get things right and, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, that's one of two teams that I've had that I felt that we deserve to be in the playoffs. And if we had gotten in, we'd have won it. Hmm. No, I, and I truly believe that. I think we'd have just run away with stuff. I want to ask Ned something. At what point in the season did you crack your shoulder? I know it was on a Sunday where you were playing football and stuff. It was right at what, the end of the season. It was at right the end of the season? The end. Yep. Like the last week or two, right at the end. Okay. I couldn't remember for sure, and and I know that yeah, your mother told me that you would play. <laughs> Forget I that. Remember that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she said he was stupid to be doing that. <laughs> we were messing around, and somehow I messed my shoulder up, and I think that was the last week when we played Armstrong. The next week, I think so. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I I couldn't remember at what point in the season it was. I know that. You came out for practice every night and we just, you know, there was nothing that much that you could do, but you suited up for the game and you were, we padded it up and then you played. But, uh, well, we never got hit. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Just, just tried to run away from people. <laughs> Didn't want to get hit. Yep. So I don't remember, I don't remember a lot of conversation about the playoffs, but if I remember right, I think, of course, it was total point system in those days. Yeah, it was only the second year of the playoffs, so it was experimental. No one really had it figured out, but it seems like in the paper, maybe, they used to list the points where you stood, uh, you know, because it ended up coming down to a per-game point average. It seemed yeah. like we, yeah. we knew – I know by the last game, we knew exactly where we were standing. I'm not sure at what point in the season, but it seemed like they used to list by class and the state was divided into four four sections, uh, list the points as the season went on. So we had a good idea where we stood. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I, don't, I don't remember talking about it a lot, but we probably did. That, that point system floors me a little bit because I've read that. IHSA book about Bernie Sagow and stuff, and he was all about sportsmanship and stuff. But the first yeah. playoff system completely encouraged running up the score. Essentially, you were you'd been at, like you guys said you needed eighty six points in that last game to have a chance, and what did you got eighty six points? It's just to me that was just kind of backwards of well the eighty six a... the eighty six points was to get to lead the state in scoring. Yeah, that's right. I don't. I don't think the margin of victory made any difference at all. It was strictly whether you won, and if the team you won beat was had a winning record by the end of the year, you got five extra points, okay. and you got we got twenty extra points for being uh, undefeated, and and so and they added the points up and divided it by the number of games you played, and that's where we got. A very unusual is we played nine games and Allison Bristow, who ended up going to the playoffs, only played eight games. And by playing our ninth game against a team that had a losing record, it brought our per game average down under theirs by hundreds of a point. Yeah, yeah. So that was under the impression because in later years they did like a 13 point spread rule right. to discourage. Yeah. Maybe that stemmed from the earlier years. So. So. But now the playoffs are too watered down. Yeah. 
Yep, there, 32 there, teams per class. There's too many teams in it that, you know, if you're fourth in your district and you have to play a number one, it's usually a, you know, a pretty bad game. Yeah, and I think since they've done that in 2008 and then they had a few years where they went back to 16, but I think there's been like two number four teams that have beat a number one team, so – yeah. two and a hundred somethings yeah it makes it tough to wonder if it's worth it well i remember the 86 point thing because i was in charge of study hall in the library and and uh i was unhappy about the situation because i didn't want the season to end but in comes donnie deward coach we just figured this out <laughs> we can't make the playoffs but if we score 86 points or more, will win the scoring title for the state. <laughs> I said 86 points. And I said, I said, even we probably can't get 86 points. Oh, yes, we can. And we argued about it. And I think a couple other guys came in too. And, and uh, so I finally said, all right, if you're close at the end of three quarters, if you're close, I'll let you play into the fourth quarter. And sure enough, at the end of three quarters, it was 78 to nothing. <laughs> so <laughs> I have a question. I have, I have a question for Coach Van Winkle. Um, so did you have any conversation with the Armstrong coach before or after the game about this situation? No. No. Uh, do you remember Bruce Bennett? Yeah. The assistant. Well, I don't know what the score was at halftime, but it 56, was 56 to nothing. And a boy, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bennett went over to their locker room and talked to their head coach and uh, tried to explain why we were kept scoring and stuff and their coach got mad and called and said something now well, look here boy or some <laughs> such thing and i remember bennett came back to our locker room was just steaming he called me boy he called me boy <laughs> and all this. well didn't we and call about a that time right before half? Come through? huh didn't we call a timeout right before half and then Doug threw the bomb to Todd Carter for a touchdown? Probably. I think that's what made him mad. <laughs> well, that and I and, don't know. And, but... and he didn't even I do want remember. To, he, I... he didn't want to come and play us anyway. And, you know, you had to play it, and it didn't matter. But it was kind of, a, I remember, chaos that whole game. But, you know, what were we going to do? Hey, let's score some points. Well, yeah. you, know, they, you know, they outscored us 36 to 30 in the second half. Yeah, because we put all the freshmen in the fourth quarter, and they yeah. just scored every play. They scored thirty six points in the fourth <laughs> quarter. <laughs> I remember that after we got a touchdown game. we needed. Yeah. We'll get to that in a little bit, but did that game take like four hours? I mean, it had to have been a long one. That's a lot of points and a lot of stoppages of the clock for all that scoring. It, that man, it's a lot the of points time. went pretty fast. I mean, they really did, and. He started pulling first string out in the first quarter, too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it wasn't like uh, it was whoever was in there made the points. Yeah, so. you just, there can't be too many 10-yard or 10-play drives in that game. They're all like every yeah. other play is a touchdown. It's crazy. So, well, yeah. when, we get, when we get to that game, you can give us a scoring recap, and it'll probably be interesting. <laughs> well, the paper that I found – was like they must have been overwhelmed by it all because it pretty much said this guy had six touchdowns of this many yards. It, it didn't give <laughs> me like a quarter by quarter. It was more like there was a lot of yards and a lot of points. So it didn't give me a good flow of the game. I was like, darn it, I wanted to get a – that would have taken I didn't, minutes just to read. What I didn't like about that game was the, their coach's interview after the game. They said uh, if we would have played the whole game like we did the fourth quarter, we would have won. <laughs> we were playing for freshman the whole game. Yeah. 
Well, let's, uh, let's keep flowing here, and then we'll get to game nine here that we're already talking about. Game six was a 51-13 to win over Missouri Thornton. That was back before it was SCMT. They were separated. Yeah. Uh, Doug had an eight-yard touchdown run. Marv Trenary, 19-yard run in the first quarter. And then Ned Hardley got both of those two-point conversions. In the second quarter, Chuck Gifford from Missouri Thornton scored on a 13-yard touchdown run. Harley answered that with a 77-yard run and a seven-yard touchdown run. And Trenary got a two-pointer on one of those. The paper didn't specify which one. Gave you guys a 30-7 to halftime lead. Um, did you guys I, – I just threw this question kind of in the middle. Uh, besides Sheffield Chapin, and even including Sheffield Chapin, did you feel threatened at all? Like, did you – it didn't seem like you ever played from behind that whole season. Did you ever feel like we might not win this game, or was it pretty much – not decided early, but you know what I'm saying? Like, even if they score, we're going to come back and score three times pretty quick type of thing. Uh, what were you guys feeling at this point? We were My nervous. recollection. Oh, you want to have it? Go ahead. My recollection was that it was Sheffield, Chafin, and Boone Valley yes. were the two teams that, you know, were like in the discussion. And those were the two games on the schedule that we probably – you know, had circled and um, probably had the most concern about. Mm -hmm. Yep. We played Boone Valley down there. If I remember, that was, I don't remember the score, but it was, wasn't too lopsided, was it? Uh, 22 to nothing. That's the next game. Yeah. yeah. 22 nothing in Renwick. Yeah. Yep. I think, I think I remember the Missouri game. Was it 51 to 13? Yep. Yeah, I, I I just remember that we felt like we played really bad that night. <laughs> well, I, remember, I remember being mad because we thought we played horrible football that night. Yeah, yeah we uh, made a few mistakes. <laughs> that that particular game um, against Missouri Thornton is uh, actually what ended my career. Uh, I got injured during that game. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but I do not remember that. Um, yeah. And, and I, if I remember right, I'm pretty sure I got my knee wrapped up after I got hit and, and it was the cleats in my, that stuck to the ground when I got hit that probably messed up my cartilage. <laughs> oh. So um, I think I got my leg wrapped up during that game. I might've even tried to finish that game, but shortly after that, uh, that, that was the end of my playing um football actually it knocked me out of basketball too <laughs> so i don't remember that kelvin god well, i've had other people tell me they don't remember that too but i i think i spent about a week in the hospital they wouldn't take that long in this day and age but <laughs> back then i did in mason city <laughs> so, uh, wow. yeah now now that you're talking about it i think i did you say you wrapped the leg and then i think i still game? played but i couldn't straighten my leg yeah um and I just felt like I was running with a limp. And uh, I, I think I remember you and with a wrapped up leg, but I didn't realize you that ended the whole season for you. I oh, yeah. That. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So who so, came in? Al Reuter? Did Al Reuter play for you then? Or who was your backup? Well, there was a little bit of, there was, I think it probably was Al Reuter. Um, because, yeah, that's, that's well, like in the article said that that there we had um, some backup in the end in in that position. Was uh, it Doug Ridema? Could have been Doug. Doug Ridema um, played Ruder. center. Be center. Doug Ridema no, played on center. defense on defense. Oh, yeah. Well, um, offense too. I, I think I was probably tight end too on offense. Some, some right, right. We right. didn't really pass the ball that much. <laughs> yeah. You guys ran it so hard all the time. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, Doug had a pretty high percentage of completions and a lot of touchdowns for the few passes we threw. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, he yeah. was dead on. <laughs> yeah, and because Todd Carter was wide open most of the time. <laughs> yeah. and Teams probably whoever... stacked the box or out the edge, and then there was nobody out there, would be my guess. No. But I think there's an article in the Mason City paper that talks about that. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, about that, me getting injured and. But, uh, Were you on crutches the rest of the season then? You remember? Well, do you remember our senior picture? Yeah. Where it was taken? 
uh, down by oh, yeah. that bridge. We were all gathered on that bridge. Out yeah. on the road. Mm -hmm. Well, if yeah. you look at my picture, if you've got your yearbook, you'll see the crutches sitting beside me. <laughs> I don't know how long that was after the game, but I don't remember that picture. I don't know. <laughs> Let's jump to game seven here. I'm, I'm curious about this defense that I that I read about in the paper. Uh, you guys already talked about it. At Renwick, Boom Valley, 22 nothing win. It was a close game compared to all your other games. Uh, yeah. The paper says Boone Valley used some kind of a trick defense to slow you down. They put one defender in the middle and six guys, maybe three on each side outside the tackle. Sounds to me like they're trying to get rid of that sweet play. Walk me through that defense. You guys remember what they did at all? Coach, do you remember their kind of a junk defense? That's what the paper was talking about, and I was trying to visualize that. I don't I don't remember it. Do you guys? I know no. they were stacked up on the outside. Yeah. I had pretty good success going up the middle. Yep. Yeah, because um, apparently whatever they did somewhat worked, I put in the notes, because they took away big plays. Uh, you had no score of more than 21 yards, and if you – Remember previous games, 50, 60, 70, 80 yard touchdown runs, and you guys only had 280 yards offense, long methodical drives. In the first quarter, you had a seven minute drive, which, you know, now it's Wes Hancock, and that's like a beautiful thing in Wes Hancock football, those long, just three, four yard drives or play three, four yards of play, long drives. 13 plays, 67 yards, ended with a Ned 21 yard touchdown run. Trenary had the two pointer. In the second quarter, another thing of beauty, 18 plays, 85 yards, ended with Doug Benton's four-yard touchdown pass to Carter. And then in the third, Marv Johnson blocked a punt out of the end zone for a safety. Uh, the free kick led to a seven-play, 45-yard drive, ended with another Ned Harley 21-yard touchdown run. And this earned you guys a share of the North Star Conference title the first one since 1968 and you guys were ranked seventh in the state at that point. Um, you know, like I said, this is, it's Wes Hancock football. Now Britain can now emerge. This sounds like a, my style of Don and I were at the Unidome this fall and we we're talking about only on third and 11 in a Wes Hancock game. Do they run an inside trap for 18 yards type of thing and <laughs> within those 80 yard drives, you know, thing of beauty in my opinion. So talk about the uh, Boone Valley game. Well, I got to have Benton verify this because I think I remember this correctly. That four-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, I believe I believe we had a fullback dive or something called, and Todd Carter split out, and there was no defender went with him, and so you just stood up and threw the ball out there. We ran the play. We all ran the play. No one knew what happened, and you threw it out there for that touchdown. Is that true? That's true. I. Oh, and well, Randy says it's true that it's true. All I remember about Boone Valley is they had the best looking cheerleaders. <laughs> remember that door? Oh, yeah. Remember? The Chapool girls. And... Oh, yeah. They had the <laughs> best cheerleaders, man. I, I also remember during that game, part of the problem is I think uh, we had a focus problem in the backfield. You got a concussion, Doug. You couldn't I did? Play. I don't remember that. That's oh, right. He was just he had a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was thinking cheerleaders. <laughs> you called one play, you got in the huddle, and you said, Why option? And you go, You took off, we're all stood there. What's he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> now now that you're talking about it, I kind of remember that. <laughs> so that's why you don't remember that game. Renwick, yeah. they had, Renwick had the Lane brothers, didn't they? Wasn't there Rick and Jerry Lane? Or they had some good ball players. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, they were good teams. I think they did. I think they dated one of the. Who was that girl, Don, who lived at the edge of town? There, I dated her for a couple times. Uh, you knew who it was. Uh, oh, the that for from Renwick. Yeah. Oh man, I don't. I know I who you're talking you about, but. I can't remember her name. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think one of the Lane anyway, we're getting... brothers uh, dated the that one, the uh, Scheffler or whatever her name was. Chapool. Chapool. Yeah. <laughs> I got to point something out, guys. Coach Van Winkle's in the bottom right of my screen here. 
you're talking about good looking cheerleaders and <laughs> you're all grinning and laughing and he's sitting there shaking his head like you know, we only won 22 nothing these fools are <laughs> girls like the coaching I think, never it was. <laughs> I think that was the problem at boom valley i think i think it was the cheerleaders <laughs> neutralized us <laughs> they had a good team though we got to give them a little credit they did have a pretty good team yeah, now they, 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 they were we were a little distracted, probably. Hey, we were seventeen-year-old males. You know what do we, what do we, how are we going to stay focused for too long? Well, but they had pretty... good athletes. You know, I in basketball too. You know what I mean? They had good athletes there. Yeah. That just cracked ever, me up. Did, I kept looking at coach, and he's like, "Gosh." Did we ever? Later, were we ever? Were we ever overconfident? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't think we just thought we were always going to win, but we weren't really overconfident, were we? We just go and we figured we'd score 50 points. But yeah, that was a tougher game, I remember. But I don't think we ever took anybody lightly. No, I don't think so either. You guys wanted to be successful and you knew what it took to be successful and you didn't overlook anybody. Well, I think I think maybe somebody reminded us on a regular basis that we weren't as great as we thought we were at times. So, well, who would do that? <laughs> I'm looking at his face right now. <laughs> he did a good job of keeping us focused. Uh, he really did. Like the halftime show, it was not a pretty picture. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, there were some things that happened at halftime, like. Two games, and the managers dropped the orange juice and and busted <laughs> busted them all over. Remember that <laughs> in the shop area. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, let's uh, let's scoot through game eight here real quick because it was a sixty six to eight win over Ventura. You guys claimed the outright conference title. Uh, had a thirty nine point second quarter, gave you a fifty three nothing halftime lead coasted through that game um starters probably didn't play much uh you guys were eight no which typically would have ended your regular season um but like we've already talked about uh you had that ninth game with armstrong uh, at this point it sounds like to me you guys knew the playoffs weren't happening is that correct after that eighth game yeah we did yeah pretty tough pill to swallow i assume we've already kind of alluded to um who won state that year? I don't remember for in a small class. Um, I got it right here. Dex, Dexfield, Dexfield, Redfield. Yeah. Red, okay. Okay. Because uh, when I because when yeah. I came when I got to Central College, uh, a guy from Dexfield that played on that state championship team was here, so uh, I told him uh, every day I saw him. I told him he'd have never won state if we'd have made the playoffs. So. <laughs> Did he agree with you? Of course not, but I was I knew what I was talking about. He didn't know. He didn't understand the Canal Bulldogs of 1973, how good we were. That's right. Yeah. The, <laughs> the playoffs that year, um, Allison Bristow made it in over you guys on that average point system. Uh they lost in the first round to Wall Lake 23 to 6. And then Wall Lake lost to Dexfield Redfield 28 nothing in the title game. Uh, that's how it went. I didn't write down who Dexfield beat in the first round, uh, but low scoring games. I think it was like no one hit more than about 20 points. Um, and then looking at your guys' average and your scoring, uh, just, you know, looking at the numbers, you'd be like, I bet you, yeah, like coach said, would have run through that 14 playoff. So um, was it hard to get up for that ninth game with Armstrong? Uh, knowing that the playoffs were out of reach, or was it just we got another week to play football? Let's enjoy it. Do you remember what your mindset was, knowing there was no playoffs, knowing you still had a game left? Let's put a hundred points on the scoreboard. <laughs> Coach, would you have let that happen? A hundred points? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I would have tried tried not to, but who knows yeah. what could have happened. Yeah. Uh, just a crazy score. Um, I have a, a thing I do. I keep the records for West Hancock football. And I have a thing called score agami where you keep track of how many times a certain score has occurred. And I can guarantee you there's never been another 86 to 36 game in our school's history. If I combine Britain Canal and West Hancock together, 86, uh, 36 win. Again, Don said you guys needed 86 to get the scoring title for that season. 
Yep. Got 86 exactly. You already talked about the coach wasn't real happy about that. And, oh, well. um, what else do you guys remember about that Armstrong game? Our coach told us not to score. <laughs> and uh, ask Randy about that play. Well, I don't think that was Armstrong game. I think that was Armstrong. <laughs> I I wanted I to get 100 to... yards. So I begged him to go in so I could run the ball, get 100 yards. He just said, go ahead, but do not score. <laughs> I got out in the open there, and there's only one person left. He was about 5'2", 110 pounds. <laughs> I just kind of leaned into him and tapped him on the helmet and said, nice tackle. That was it. Um, in this game, Marv Trenary had 317 rushing yards, uh, six touchdowns. He scored from 80, 72, 25, 9, 7, and 5. Ned and Randy each had two touchdown runs, and then Doug threw a pass to Todd Carter for a touchdown. You guys had 21 first downs, 639 total yards of offense. Uh and then their their stats had to have been pretty decent too with that, that 36 point fourth quarter against the backups. Um, pretty crazy. Uh, and then, yeah, you guys got the scoring title that we think anyway, uh, 51.9 points per game. And ironically, uh, second place that year was Britt with 51.5 points per game. And if people know their history, Britt won the 2A title that year, um, went 10 and 0. Uh, just kind of a cool a cool story there that 10 miles apart both teams went undefeated and unfortunately you guys didn't get a chance at the playoffs like Britt did but a pretty good run that season for Hancock County um uh anything else about that game you guys can think of well I know I... go ahead go ahead go ahead Russ uh we didn't get to play that much I mean they were pulling first string in the first quarter mm -hmm. So. Well, we played offense. We didn't play defense. We we stayed the the starters stayed in to score to get to eighty six. I just the thing I remember about that game was the incredible sadness after the game when because we knew we were we were done and we knew we weren't making the playoffs and so it was a pretty sad locker room after the game. I do remember that. Yep. Did what did they just decide after that? Because I remember that too. It just seemed not something just didn't seem right with that whole situation. Was it the next year they changed the system, added more teams, or what they do? Because it, it you don't go undefeated, score whatever 50 helmet, and then well, you don't get in the playoffs. There had to be something they just changed it, didn't they? Within a year or two, I think they were uh, made changes. Yeah, I don't know that it happened. Uh that quickly but eventually they they changed it uh you know that you know we have to remember that was only the second year of the playoff system in iowa and so it was what they thought was a good system at the time and we were we were incredible we were such an exception to the rule what what was hard for us is we were penalized for playing an extra game Al, like i said allison briscoe only played eight games we played nine, so we risked losing it another game, and we were, we were. It cost us instead of being rewarded for that. That was the, that was the big flaw in the system, in in our case. Had you played? I know Armstrong the year before as well, or was this the only time you played that ninth game? No, we played them the year before. You did okay for a ninth game, and they beat us. Uh, that's the game we only had 18 players and but they were mostly juniors and sophomores and uh that's when we knew that we could probably be pretty good the next year and they were they had a good record seven and two or some such thing okay that's what you're talking about earlier that's right yep. yeah yeah see the crazy thing is if they would have had a winning record yeah they had yeah. a losing record so that cost us you know, point average if they had had a winning record in 73 then we would have made the playoffs yep <clears throat> that's right um i brought this up when i did the, the coach van winkle episode um, what i say about a year and a half two years ago and then don you and i did one way at the beginning of this podcast and then i've done a few with the 73 brit team 
obviously Britain and Canal were separate back then. They're together now. And in 73, I'm guessing there wasn't even talks of consolidation or anything. Brit won the two way title. They platooned. They didn't even have guys play one, both ways. You guys were loaded. I mean, I, I just go back to that. Imagine if the schools were combined at that time there. And I think one of the linemen from the 73 Brit team, he goes, I don't think I would have played like there, there wasn't enough spots to go around for some of us. Cause there was just so many good players. If we were, you know, Wes Hancock back at the time, um, just, was there any talk of Britain Kanawa? I know they played in 1969. Was there any talk of them, you guys playing them at this point, or was that not even on in anyone's minds? There was talk about it, but I mean, talk's cheap. So yeah. uh, no official. Yeah, we were, you know, we were in different classes at yeah. that time and the consolidation didn't happen until the mid to late 80s. Yep, 89. So yeah, it was a long it was a long time before that. So no, there wasn't I think we probably said I wish we would have played him or could have played him. Uh, I used to tell Bob Sanger that if we'd have played him we'd have beat him, but uh, <laughs> How do you respond to that, coach? Well, you know, Bob, he just kind of grumble a little bit and not really say much. <laughs> yeah. <Sounds laughs> yeah. Um, Coach, you moved on shortly after this to, to Roland's story. Um, you guys, how how did you guys follow Coach's career at Roland? And, and Coach, uh, what did this group mean to you as a, as a coach? You coached for many decades. What did this group mean to you? This group means a lot to me. And I think about them every now and then. And in the first year that I was at Roland Story, we were horrible. And I kept thinking to myself, my God, how bad would Kanawha have beaten these guys? <laughs> you know, and it's the truth. And uh, But uh, no, I've never forgotten my Kanawha days. And I know that it was... We were there for six years. And then Marty and I had just gotten married the summer before we moved there. And it turned out to be some of the best six years of our entire life. Two of our two daughters were born when we were there. Uh, I and well, I loved coaching and the different sports and all that. And, and it was just fun. And it was a great place. And well, I'll never forget that season. Never will I forget that. And I can re remember funny things. And well, I remember Tom Otto, <laughs> Barney, <laughs> and we're watching film on the stage. And <laughs> it was against a team that we were beating pretty bad. Maybe it was Corwith. I don't it know. Was, it, was, it was Corwith. I know what story you're going to tell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, Barney went in, Tom Otto went into the game at quarterback, and I said, we're not trying to score, not at all. Just take a knee and all that. It's late in the game. He proceeds to run it and score. So I didn't say anything at the time, but <laughs> the award was burned. And so we're on the stage the next Monday watching the game film and Otto or DeWard says something about you weren't even supposed to do that and all that. And Tom Otto says, you're just jealous because you never see your name in the paper or some <laughs> sort of thing like that. And holy Moses. <laughs> DeWard jumps up and says, "I'm that's it. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. And they're round around the stage they went. <laughs> and Tom Otto runs over to me and says, he says, protect me. I said, no way. I said, you deserve it. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Okay. Yeah, I do have I do have that memory also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my memories of Kanawa are just A plus. Coach, how many years did you coach Roland Story? 40. 40. Wow. I, I remember watching papers and reading a lot about your game. Did you make the playoffs quite? I remember you played a lot of games and you, you had some good teams. 
Yeah, the best team I had didn't make the playoffs. Oh, really? It was one of these things. We we opened the season with a 3A team. We were 2A. And uh, they beat us by one point. And, that, and then the rest of the season, we were never scored on by anybody. And uh, we didn't make the playoffs because of that. And I think that you guys would have won the state and these guys would have won the state. And and so we're missing two state championships there. But I was fortunate that we had some real good talent come along, and we ended up winning a couple of state championships and going to the playoffs several times. And that's that's been good. Players were on the wishbone the whole time. Yeah, we well, yeah, but you know we would put a slot out to one side or a wing to one side, or we would, we would mix it up a lot. And there was misdirection and, and so on. It depended who was quarterback and what we could do and whether we could throw the ball much. When my son was quarterback, we threw it. No, well, he had over a thousand yards passing, but uh, it just depended upon who was playing quarterback and what their skills were. We had one guy that was really, really good. Uh, two of them that, that run the option and stuff. And but uh, it's been fun. I had, I loved coaching. I have to say something here that uh, you were really missed when you left, and uh, a lot of people said how much they wished you would have stayed. So, uh, well, there are times that that I wanted. Job. The thing that I was afraid of was that there was going to be consolidation and I was going to be the odd man out, you know, with Sanger up at Brit and, and so on. And so we felt, the Marty and I felt that we had to take the opportunity we had, even though Roland's story wasn't, at that time, a, I didn't think it was a very good job to get, but she got a heck of a good job at Mary Greeley and Ames because she was a nurse and and stuff. So we worked at it. Players, what do you uh, mem other memories or thoughts of of coach and and your time playing football at Kanawha? <laughs> I'm going to start well, calling, calling I out. <laughs> well, I think I think any any time you have the kind of success we had, I think it, in my opinion, all starts at the top. And Coach Van Winkle did a great job of uh, keeping us focused and and playing. You know, getting us to play good football, sound good sound football. We were fundamentally sound and and all of those things. I think about some of the assistant coaches he had. They didn't really know a whole lot about football, so. It uh, it came came from him, came through him, and uh, you know I I had the uh, you know spending thirty five years coaching at the in Central College, I had many opportunities to go watch some of his players when we were recruiting him and watching Roland Story, and I can tell you he never changed from nineteen seventy three till. Uh, whatever year he retired, he never changed. He coached kids the way he did when he coached us and uh, has a proven, obviously a proven track record success. And if you talk to uh, in the Iowa high school uh, realm, high school football realm, uh, that people that have been around, everybody knows Coach Van Winkle and everybody respects what he did. And uh, he he's very well thought of in the coaching ranks throughout the state of Iowa. So we were very blessed and fortunate to have a guy like him be our, be our coach when we were in high school. I don't remember. It, I don't remember any problems really. I and mean, we just loved to play football and yep. he was a good coach and we just wanted to play well for him and we enjoyed it. We just loved football and he was a good coach. Well, I think that was well said, Don, what uh, what you said, um, not that yours wasn't dead, <laughs> but, but, but what, what Don said, I think, kind of summarized it, it pretty well. Um, 
Yeah, I just remember, I remember for, and I don't remember what year you moved. You, you used to live across the street from us. Yes. But then you moved to another house. Yeah, the house that we were in across the street from you was awfully small. Right. No, I remember, I remember my sisters used to babysit when yep. you're, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then we moved a couple blocks away to a big, <laughs> a big okay. four bedroom thing. But, uh, you know, I think uh, aside from what Don said, I think he hit it on point. I don't know if I have anything to add to that, but I would say those years in Kanawa were, um, were special. You know, I wouldn't trade those years growing up there for anything. No, I wouldn't either. Unfortunately, I was through there a couple of years ago and, and it's just, it makes me sad driving through there. And, you know, Brit and Kanawa, when I remember how it was when, when I was growing up, it's, it's just, it's just sad. Yeah. I drove through there last fall. Holly and I did, my oldest daughter, and we had been to, my son was coaching it, was a, what was the offensive coordinator at Gilbert and they had played at Algona. And so Ali and I drove through Kanawa. It was late at night. It was like 10 30 or something, but I showed her where she grew up and the houses we lived in and this and that and the next thing. And it brought back a lot of wonderful memories. And you know what? We need to say thank you again because you did a good job for us and you taught us how to play the game i mean uh you just did a good job for us well thank you i really appreciate all this stuff guys i really do and you know the thing of it is um whether you're a coach um or in any other kind of business uh did did you lose me because my screen just went oh, we can we can hear you but we you're, can you still hear me still, yep we can oh, still hear you yep oh, you're okay good. But, but what I was going to say is you can tell um, he had a team to work with, but it takes the the leader, the coach, to be able to see the talents of each individual player and then to be able to work with each of those players and help them succeed in what they're doing. And I think Kerry pretty much showed a, to be a pretty good example of that. Thank you. I think that's a, a great place to, to wrap things up here, fellas. Um, coming up on the podcast, I have Shay Smith, who is a cheerleader at UNI, and then Paul and Matthew Francis. Paul's a football coach at Wes Hancock, and Matthew is one of our uh, best players of all time. Jared Haxon will be on with me. And then you guys mentioned Doug Ridham. I have his three kids, uh, Tony, Kurt, and Julie, doing an episode with me. And then uh, the 2016 Girls State Championship track team from Wes Hancock are rounding out my next five episodes. So um, I had a good time doing this, guys. I, I'm a Wes Hancock nut, and I love all the Kanawa history that's in there. Um, our Hall of Fame uh, ceremony is coming up here on September 6th, and we're inducting the 78 and 79 Kanawa boys track teams that won state titles. Uh, we did the 48 Kanawa baseball team last year. Uh, just really love digging into this Kanawa history. I, I think I told you in, in your episode, Coach, when I played junior high football at Kanawa, uh, when that you know that's where the, the middle school is, uh, they still had the old Kanawa Bulldog jerseys out there. And when you got to be an eighth grader, you got to wear the Kanawa Bulldog jersey for practice. And that was a huge deal to us to wear the Kanawa Bulldog jersey uh, for practice time. That was a lot of fun for us. So uh, I appreciate you guys coming on here. Um, it's cool. We got out in California and people still in Kanawa and various parts of the state. So it's a lot of fun to uh, catch up and, and let you guys have this time to reminisce. So any, any last minute things that you're just thinking of or want to throw out real quick, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up with the go Bulldogs. Well, anytime oh. you guys come down this way and have time to stop, uh, I live in Roland and love to talk to you. It's, it's great. I it's really appreciate this. Down. <clears throat> so so dan i would just want to say thanks for doing this i don't know if you guys know when i was coaching at central dan was a student coach and so he was my assistant 
coaching linebackers for a couple of years. So, but I really appreciate this. Uh, this has been fun. I appreciate you getting coach Van Winkle to come on here and coach. I hope, I hope you know how much we all appreciate you and what you did for us when we were those 17 year old, uh, mop headed, uh, crazy little guys that run around canal Iowa. So you did impact us all in a very special way. So you mean hopefully you right know here? that. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Thank you. That's the wrong team. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it says 74, but it's actually the 73, 73 team. Yeah. yeah. It's in the 74 yearbook. Uh, speaking Alvin's of. Crutches. Yeah. So. Am I there? <laughs> yeah. So. Hey, uh, and Don, I, you know this, but I was scared to death of you uh, through most of college when we worked together. He, uh, <laughs> the story of Don chasing the kid around the film session. I'm like, yep, he uh, he had his, uh, he was fiery, and um, I was his guy uh, at practice and stuff. And uh, I'll never forget one game. You were mad in an official, shocking, right? And um, you ripped your headset off and snapped it in half, and you turned to me and said, "Fix this." And we got <laughs> a bunch of tape, and we taped it up quick, and we're like, "I think that might work," and gave it back to you. And you're just, you know, we're still in the heat of the moment, and. Um, after the game, it was still during the game. You came up to me and apologized. I'm sorry. You know, like, it's like you're the most fiery guy there was and the most passionate guy there was, but it was, then you always knew, you know, it was just, you had such a good balance of that. But I was definitely terrified of you um, the first couple seasons. I was like, ah, he's not as scary as I thought he was. So <laughs> just did amazing things. And we're going to, Don and I are going to, I'm going to use air quotes for myself. We're going to coach the alumni game this fall. Don's going to be the head coach, and I'm literally just going to be there to hang out with some old buddies and pretend to coach, just tell those college players, do whatever you want type of thing. So uh, we're going to have a good time this fall uh, reminiscing to some Central College football and helping the team get ready for their season. So you bet. Well, Thank you for was... putting up with us. Yeah. Oh. Thanks, Thank Dan. you guys for coming on. This has been great. You bet. Good to see you. you, bet. you guys see hang you. on. Hang on here. Uh, don't hang up on me yet. I want to talk to you guys after we stop recording. So, like always, uh, whether it's a Brit episode or Wes Hancock, we say go Eagles, but we have to say go Bulldogs. Thanks again, guys. <laughs>